Oh, there you go. There's my first good smallmouth of this spring. Setting right where he should have been, right in the where that eddy comes by those deeper rocks. We got water coming in. It's warming up a little bit right there. There's oxygen in it. And he's sitting there looking for a meal. And uh, that's what this little cone-headed white minnow is all about, especially early in the year like this. Beauty, what a pretty little fish. Love it. All right, so we're going to cut him loose, let him go and grow up. Very nice. Well, welcome back, folks, to a, uh, another video with flyfishingwithjeff.com, and it is uh, April 15th, and uh, very early here in Indiana. We've had some incredibly warm weather, and uh, the everything's greening up much earlier. And in fact, I think this is the earliest I've ever really been out wet wading and looking for smallmouth. So uh, just an absolutely gorgeous day, supposed to be up in the upper 70s and um, looking for more fish just like that one. So come along with me today and uh, remember at the end of the video, if uh, you like this, give it a like. If you have a question, send me a question through my website at flyfishingwithjeff.com. Uh, he's no giant, but they are laying right in there where, right where that seam is right there. That's just like trout fishing. There's rocks they can lay behind. They're looking upstream. That water from the fields coming in. So everything about this spot is perfect. And uh, yeah, he's not he's not a big one, but he is a cute little guy. All right, you grow up, folks. <clears throat> well, welcome back. Um, this is the part of the film where I wish I had my 19 and 20 inch smallmouth to uh, show you. But the truth of the matter is things happen and uh, I kind of messed up and um, left the previous fishing experience, left that material on my SD card. And so believe it or not, it actually shut down. And in fact, it shut down about mid cast um, in the hole where I caught the first 19 inch fish followed that up the next hole with a 20 inch and they're both just beautiful fish and um, I sure wish I had the video to show you I was kind of heartbroken over it but I don't and uh, you'll see some of the photos that I took with my still camera and uh, we'll get over it and move on but I am going to show you one of my favorite flies today um, I'm outside here tying it and it's very easy to tie and it works so well for me early in the uh, spring especially when there's a little more water than usual it's got a little weight to it and as you can see i've kind of got the allowing it to kind of float through these pools and uh, it's just a killer pattern so i'm going to tie that fly for you and um, i hope this one works give it a try All right, folks, so here we are, we're back. We're gonna tie, uh, this is just an excellent spring pattern. In fact, I, I use it when I need to get a fly down into some deeper water. In the video that you watched today, I'm fishing this white streamer below a uh, three weight, on a three weight rod, a three weight floating line with about six or seven foot of tippet material. And the last, oh, last two to three feet is 16 pound stuff. So we're just going to get started. Um, as you can see, I've already got a, uh, this is a Tiemco 9394 size two. And uh, it's a rather long, it's 4X long, I like that. And uh, I've got about 15 wraps of .030 behind a, probably a medium sized cone head. And um, we're just going to get started with it. So we've already got it kind of set up and ready to go. We're going to bring our 
thread wrap right back in here and bring it back forward. Slip off the excess. If you've ever tried to tie outside, you know there's a little bit of extra wind going on around out here. So next up is we're going to take three marabou. We're going to take a woolly booger marabou in shad gray and we're going to take two strung marabou blood quills in white and we're going to put the gray in between the white. Now that's a lot of a lot of bulk but this being a heavy fly with the weight and the cone head it will work here. So we're going to move our well, we're going to start right here behind the thread wraps and we're simply going to tie backwards and again this is a this is a pretty simple pattern uh, in fact I, I like tying simple patterns I don't want to have to spend a whole bunch of time and I want to, don't want to spend hours and then the first thing that happens get something snagged on the bottom and feel like I have to go swimming for it but we're just going to clip off the excess and we'll go from there We'll wet down those fibers a little bit. You can kind of see that gives it a stripe right there with the uh, gray in the middle. And we're going to come back in with some silver flashaboo. Oh, probably three or four strands here. And we're going to simply tie um, on the end here right up on top. Make a couple loops pull that back and I like to keep it right there on top so that's the that's the bulk of the tail we're going to tie down some of the rest of this marabou here and come back to the rear of the hook so that's what we have now um, the last thing we're actually going to do is we're going to use some hackle flash this is UV Miler and Trilobal it's in silver um, I, I like small, I like medium, large, extra large, I mean I use it all. You just, the idea is you're just going to try to gauge this uh, with the size of fly and the profile. And with this fly I, I, I want a, a, a slender profile and I want something that's really going to fall, kind of cascade down through these pools as you could see from the video. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come back here towards the back now with this UV Mylar and um, simply going to tie it in. We're not going to worry about it being too pretty right there because we're going to wrap up towards the front take care of all that problem and we're going to simply start making palmering wraps forward and well pretty much one right on the other. Now take a second here every once in a while to preen and to pull out the trapped fibers okay and you may have to work it work it around a little bit to get everything kind of laying backwards but then again you know it doesn't have to be perfect here <clears throat> we're talking about a nice spring pattern here for these smallmouth and and they are aggressive they're out looking for food uh, especially the big females they're trying to load up before they spawn um, couple of the fish that I did catch yesterday one was 19 one was 20 the 19 was was the best fish I'd taken off of uh, this little stream and uh, she was really about halfway full of eggs so really doing a nice job so we're just going to continue to work this forward you can use hackle pliers if you choose to probably would be a good idea but I'm just going to go ahead and continue to wet my fingers, pull the fibers back and it's all going to lay back when we get done anyway. So again I told you I'm fishing this this particular fly I fish below a three weight line and um, a floating line because I wanted the hinge point to be kind of at the top so I could give this fly a lot of action as it, as it was coming down moving down parallel to the structure. So that's about it. We've tied off right there. We're going to come back, give it a couple of nice wraps right here, form a nice head. And a quick whip wrap. Right 
There we go. And lastly, I have been using I've been using this new product by Bondik. Uh, and it's Bondik uh, Repair. Anything better than glue, waterproof. I uh, found mine on Amazon and I simply love it. In fact, all I'm going to do is just make a quick little layer across the top right there and kind of work it in behind that cone head. And then I'm going to turn it over, use my UV light, and that's it. It will cure almost instantly. And you might ask, well, why would I do that? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, the, the bigger fish, they will, they will start to gnaw and tear at the hook and um, at the top. And I just like to get my mileage out of the fly. So that's it right there. And I think you'll find it very easy to fish, very interesting to fish. That's a great pattern. Um, again, fish it parallel to the structure. Let it go uh, fly or uh, nose first down through into the deeper pools. And uh, especially in the spring, um, let the fish come and find it. Don't You're not fishing it as aggressively as you might in the summer. So give that pattern a try. Um, again, very easy to tie. Doesn't cost much, doesn't take very long, and I think you'll, I think you'll do real well with it.